Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be going over my 2021 wish list, and I am in a completely different place, literally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. I am in a totally different place this year than I was last year. Last year at this time, I was still working a typical nine to five office job, and so my needs, you know, required a huge work tote bag where I could carry my laptop, case files. I would pack lunch as much as I could. So my needs reflected that and my wish list reflected that. You know, then everything changed. And even if the pandemic didn't happen, a couple months ago, my husband's job relocated us. And so we moved to a totally different state and my job graciously is allowing me to work remote 100% of the time. So I really don't have a need for a large tote bag, which kind of topped my list last year. I think I am kind of approaching purse piece at this point. We'll see what happens, but I will start off with my wish list for this year. And it is constantly changing. Like it changes every day because I'll see something and I it just kind of plants a seed in me. And I think like, okay, I think I could use that. Yeah. Starting off with Dior. One of the carryovers from Dior that I definitely want to get this year is the 30 Montaigne and specifically in the navy oblique. I love blue, I love the navy oblique. It just hits every need I have in a crossbody bag, which by the way, crossbody bags are my most used bags right now. You know, I'm not really using huge totes, like I said, because I'm not going into the office. I'm not really traveling as much. So I find that I'm not carrying a lot of my huge tote bags as much as I love them. I recently went to the Dior boutique. I did pick up a few things. I think my next video will be my, my haul. And I was so glad a lot of you were following me <laughs> in my Instagram stories as I was shopping because a lot of times I just can't decide, you know? And I fell in love with the Toit de Jouy shawl. It's some kind of a cashmere blend. It was so beautiful. First of all, they call it a scarf. It's gigantic. It's literally as big as my throw blankets that I use in the home. So I curled up on the couch in the store <laughs> and I just, I really, really like it. I just thought it is so comfortable. I love the pattern because my situation has changed. So I'm home all the time. There are occasions when I will need to go into the office. 99.9% .9 of the time I'm working from home. And so I just want to be comfortable, okay? <laughs> so I tried on the Chez Moi sandals. Now, when these sandals popped up, I posted this, I think it was a couple months ago. They look very similar and they're kind of designed very similarly to the Dior D-Way sandals, which I do own in the same navy kind of oblique pattern. But this one is different. It's velvet, which is kind of a higher price point. So when I saw that, I was like, eh, it's kind of pricey for what essentially are house slippers, you know? But when I tried it, I was surprised because it actually is thicker than I thought it would be from the pictures. And I want to enjoy working from home. I want my home office to be very serene and peaceful and calm and full of beautiful things. So I think very soon, I think imminently, any trio of these three things I will be adding to my collection. So that's the Dior Montaigne, the Toit de Jouy scarf, blanket, shawl, throw, <laughs> and the Chez Moi sandals. Okay, moving on to LV. A lot of these new collections just aren't really on my radar these days. I am not feeling the men's collection, and as much as I love men's bags, I loved the Cloud collection last year, but this season coming up, it was the men's runway spring summer. One was a really colorful, it looked like crayon, <laughs> crayon monogram. And then another was the monogram with these like crazy cartoon animals stuck to it. I was not feeling any of those collections. So I just, I really don't see any of the new or seasonal or trendy kind of LV items on my wish list this year. I'm sticking to classics. And so what I do have tentatively, and you know, this is just a wish list. It's not a hundred percent that I'm gonna get it but I have my eyes on a hard-sided trunk or luggage piece. We just moved to a new home, we're furnishing it, and I wanna have just beautiful classic pieces. Hard-sided luggage, when you do a custom order, they'll commission an artist to hand paint 
an illustration, like any illustration of your choice. I'll throw up some pictures that my essay sent me, but they're just so beautiful. I'm thinking, you know, one of the hard-sided jewelry cases. I would love one of those huge trunks where you can turn it into a coffee table essentially and put a glass on top of it. I don't know if that's in my price range, maybe a vintage one for a new hard-sided trunk. I am kind of eyeing the, I think it's the Coffret Tresor, which is kind of like a jewelry case. Then there was another jewelry case that has the dividers in it already. Or if you check out Yellow Chic Road, she got a vintage Boite Chapeau hat box. And I have always loved the hat box silhouette. It's just such a classic. It's just so feminine. <laughs> I would never use it. You know, I don't wear hats. I'm not traveling by steamer train. It is so classic. I do have my eye on a sling bag from the men's collection. And there are, are a few. I'm not as familiar with the style names. One of them I think is literally just called bum bag. You know, you have the LV monogram women's bum bag that looks like a typical fanny pack. But the men's bum bag, I think it's a rectangle. I just find that style of a crossbody sling when I'm with my kids and I'm just running around. I just, I want my few things that I'm carrying to be like right on my person. I think the other one was Christopher maybe. So like the Christopher backpack, but they make a Christopher sling uh, or bum bag or crossbody. And then I think Discovery. So one of those, I, I kind of want to try it on. I haven't tried those. One of my favorite LV bags now is, is the Outdoor Messenger, and that is also from the men's collection. So I, I love men's bags. I just find them to be so functional for me. I have one of those on my wish list. So really no women's bags from LV. Moving on to Chanel. Chanel just had a price increase. It is absurd. It is rude. It's insulting. <laughs> and I am not having it. A couple days before the price increase, I almost did a panic buy because I was eyeing hardcore the Chanel 19 in the white iridescent from the spring collection of this year. Then last year, the 19 was not on my wish list at all. I was one of those people that when I first saw it, I was like, I don't like this. <laughs> what? I thought it was so puffy. I didn't understand it. I was like, what is all, what's with all the hardware on it? I wasn't a fan of the kind of like squishy shape of it until I tried it. So when I went in store, I was like, well, okay, let me just try it on. And I loved it. I really liked it. I liked the smaller size and I liked that it's a lot more casual and it's exactly how I would wear a bag these days. Very casual. I have Chanel classic flaps in all three sizes, I think. And I, I rarely, rarely wear them. But the 19 is perfect because I would mostly wear it as a crossbody. It has that essential back slip pocket and it just is so comfortable and it's like squishy and slouchy and very practical for me. And I liked it in black, I liked it in denim. I kind of had it on my wish list. And so this year I was like, you know what? I love, love the iridescent white iridescent pearl from the 21P collection. And so they had the Chanel 19 in that color, but it was in the bigger size, the medium. I don't know the sizes. <laughs> the one I liked was the smaller size. There was a medium and then maybe there's like a large. They only had it in one of the larger sizes and I was so close to getting it. The price then was $5,300, which is absurd, okay? That is an absurd price, <laughs> but I love the color. I love the color and I like the bag, but I didn't like that size. And so that combination of all of that together, I didn't like. I would have preferred the bag in a smaller size. As much as I love the color, I would want that color in a smaller bag, a smaller something, maybe a wallet on chain or just a regular classic flap. So I didn't want to settle because it might be available in a smaller size and I would rather pay. I don't even know if I'm gonna get it at this point because now the price has gone up so much, but I want to use it, you know? And so I think in that size and in that color, I I ended up passing. So I think I made the right choice, but it still is on my wish list in some kind of combination yet to be seen. So I guess the Chanel 19 is on my wish list and a Chanel iridescent bag <laughs> in a smaller size is also on my wish list. And now the final item on my wish list, I have kind of three things and it is from Hermes. And two of them I have already fulfilled. <laughs> so I will be unboxing them in my next video. I never really had Hermes on my wish list. I just, that price point was just like, wow, that's pretty crazy. 
And so I just never thought I would be kind of in a position to get an Hermes bag. I think last year I was like, well, maybe next year. So this year I might look into it. I decided, yeah, I am going to look into it. <laughs> I have my eyes on an Hermes Birkin 25 or 30, preferably 25. I know the wait list is longer for the 25, but I think I am so full up on huge tote bags that for an Hermes, I really want a smaller size that I can use in almost every single occasion. I have a great Hermes SA. He was super helpful. He kind of took my wish list and said, you know, we'll see. And he actually seemed very optimistic because I'm pretty flexible on the colors, almost all neutral colors. So black, brown, taupe, beige, gold, or blue, but like a very specific shade of blue. So I know there's the new blue broom, which is like a baby sky blue. I don't know if I could do that color. I just gravitate towards a very deep, bold, royal blue, kind of like my Chanel uh, Sunset on the Sea bag back there. So yeah, if they had a blue Birkin, I would be all over it. Like that's my jam, I love blue. So Birkin 25 or Birkin 30, so we'll see, you know, we'll see. I'm just putting it out there. You just have to put your intentions out into the universe and then maybe it can just like manifest itself into your collection. I appreciate the silhouette and the style of the Kelly. I kind of prefer a Chanel Coco handle, I think, if I were to get a bag in that silhouette. If I am offered a Kelly, I'll consider it, but I really have my eye on a Birkin this year. The other thing that was number one on my wish list for Hermes is the Avalon blanket and pillow. And, you know, again, I'm home all day long. I'm working from home. We just moved, we're furnishing, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't sure about the color. I do have an Hermes unboxing for you soon. Uh, well, I have a, a huge kind of a haul unboxing for you, but I did manage already to check off the Hermes blanket and pillow off my wish list. So I will be sharing that in my next video, but that is it for my 2021 wish list. That's not as extensive as my 2020 wish list, but it's really kind of high ticket items that are on the list. So, you know, we'll see what happens. I might change my mind and get something else. I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, that's my wish list very different. Again, my entire kind of lifestyle has changed. I'm not commuting to an office job. I'm working from home. So I found that my preferences are geared towards kind of outfitting my house. A lot of us, it's really changed. You know, it's the new normal. While I love big bags, I just cannot lie. And I <laughs> am just working from home. So I have nowhere to wear my huge bags. Share your wish list in the comments below. Let me know what you are planning on picking up this year. I hope you enjoyed my 2021 wish list. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to catch you in my next video. Bye.